All right. Hello, 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 hello. It is Coley Cole live here. It's Coley Cole. It's Coley Cole. It's Coley Cole. It's Coley Cole. It's Coley Cole live. It's Coley Cole live. It's Coley Cole. It's Coley Cole. It's Coley Cole. It's Coley Cole. It's Coley Cole live. Hello, hello, hello. Tuesday Thoughts with Coley Cole live here. See, I have my shirt on. It says, it's okay to have your say. Coley Cole live. I want you to grab you one of these shirts. They have been a great topic of discussion. Um, I am fooling around with this thing here. Um, I wanted to talk to you today. It's a kind of a sense of, well, I'm going to say kind of. It's a sensitive topic. Um... We started the conversation last week entitled House Business and talking about things that um, happen and you're told what happened in this house stays in this house or there's things that you've been put to shame about or there's things that we as culture, you know, in our culture have grown up with that we consider um, house business. Um, so... The one sensitive topic that I know people do not like to talk about, which is why I'm here to talk about those uncomfortable things, uh, is church trauma. And I was led to talk about, think about, I was talking about this last year, but I mentioned it a little bit, but didn't really get into it because I know it's so sensitive. But um, I started talking about it last week because I have been getting a lot, a lot, a lot of messages about it. So, I figure if we're getting messages about it, then we need to talk about it. So, here it goes. Um, church trauma. I like the next person love, love, love church. I love it to no end. I love a good church service. Um, I also have attended two different kinds of churches. And um, one was just straight Baptist and one was like a bunch of mixed up stuff. Pentecostal, apostolic, cogent, just a bunch of rules that we had learned um, because it had been passed down from, you know, people to us, which I thank God for a lot of things because a lot of those things made me stable and gave me some stability in areas where I probably may not have had stability before. Um, so I know that I am not the only one who has grown up with different things, but I know that there are also some of you who have grown up with things as well. And I ask for comments about church trauma. And I'm gonna read you some things that, that I got. Um, and this is not to push anybody away from church or anything, but just to show that there's a lot of things that we learned that was either um, religious or traditional, but maybe not as helpful and as a therapist, I deal with um, a lot of clients who bring up things that they learned in church that weren't great for them. And let's put it this way, they are traumatized by certain things. And we know now as adults, and that when you read the Bible and things for yourself, you can see that some things are not, um, I'm gonna say are not, some things are, actually passed down and not exactly in the book so these are comments i got from other people um some i agree with some i've seen some i haven't seen but it goes to show you that it's more out there than we think so i'm gonna read them to you someone said that um when the um building was stormed when they stormed down the building in in, in dc that if the ushers of the church were Guarding the building, nobody would have gotten in. Because one thing about the ushers is that they have it on lock. Ushers at churches, they know how to guard a door. They know when to let people in. They know when to let people out. And they were saying that's one thing that they admire, that it was a, a tight ship. They ran a tight ship. But there's also somebody who said that they didn't like that because the ship was so tight. Um, someone said looking at the ushers, and a line gave them PTSD because they remembered the days when they couldn't get up or, or couldn't do anything. Someone said, 
Um, don't move or squirm during prayer or a song, or when they are done, they will hold you back and not let you in when the door is open because they were strict on no movement while you were in church. Um, the usher would let them know when their children could go to the bathroom because you didn't just get up and walk around church aimlessly. There were certain times that you can get up and go to the bathroom. I even remember as a child growing up in, in my Baptist church that we could not go to the bathroom unless the um, choir was singing, but not when anybody was talking. Definitely not. And my grandmother would call us down to the pulpit and make us sit in the choir with her if we got up and moved when we weren't supposed to. Because in her mind, that was order and that was respecting the church. Um, somebody said, during offering, move at your own risk. <laughs> Don't make any moves. Someone said, once the doors were locked, no one was getting in or out. Another was us ushers would come with a napkin to your mouth and tell you to spit spit out the gum right in the napkin. I have experienced that one. Um, not being accepted at church with pants on or looking untidy, even if you were a non-believer and did not know the protocol. I do remember there was times when people would come into church and they would smell or they would be homeless or any of those things. And um, sometimes they would get turned away or um, look frowned upon, but then there were others in the church that would say, come on in. It all depended on who the person was. So that's not all churches. So that's another thing you have to balance out. You have to remember who was talking to whom. And a lot of people did have empathy and let people in because that's what the church was for. And to this day, that's why people go out and minister in different areas outside and in communities because sometimes people they, they didn't come to church because they didn't feel like they had on the proper clothing and I would always tell people who cares what you wear but they would say no 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 I don't want to embarrass you or I don't want um, people in the church to know and I would beg them nobody's going to embarrass you you're going to be fine because the the churches that I did attend were were open to that and I thank God I didn't have the experience where they turned people away. So I will say that's not every church, but apparently there is some. Being sent to the altar when you were pregnant, and um, if even by one of the males of the church, only the female would get in trouble. Um, I, I've had people talk to me who um, their parents sat them down. They couldn't do anything in the church um, if they were um, pregnant and uh, what they call out of wedlock. And... Um, they've grown up to now feel shame and to feel ridicule because that happened and they they have a hard time with that and that's something I hear often um, not being able to go to a different function if it's not with somebody from church which means you didn't really learn a lot of good social skills outside of your church you've only learned what you learn in the building and there's a whole world out there um, one thing I have learned in the churches that I attend, attended was that we learn the things so that we can go out and teach other people. That's what disciples are. They, they go out um, and, they, and they bring people in. And so it's not just for the people in the four walls. We got to go out. So you got to be amongst people who are non-believers at some point if you're trying to bring them in, right? There was also a difference in the type of church that you went to. Um, there's different religions that that mean different things. Um, uh, with Catholics, you wear certain certain outfits. You kneel and pray more than you do in other churches. You um, do a lot of quiet singing and quiet walking. And in other churches, you you can yell, scream, run around, jump up and down, do all of that. Um, and you were accepted. So. What I will say when it comes to church trauma is that it's not that it was a problem going to church. It was that you for yourself need to learn what the Bible and what God says about church. There were a lot of traditions that have been broken now that nobody does anymore because they realize it's not as effective. Um, each generation is different. The generations that we're dealing with now, the younger generation, they're all about the internet and, 
and, and what you wear and how you look and, you know, if you got swag. And sometimes you got to bring them in a certain way, change up the music. Um, sometimes you have to go out into the community and do things in where you would not normally not go to bring other people in. Um, and if you are one of the people that have had any of these traumas, this is where you can teach others that God is still God. But sometimes people have their own ways of thinking. So that doesn't mean that you can't come to God or you can't be saved or you can't um, be around certain people or you can't go to church. You just have to know for yourself and have your own relationship with God. Um, I am never ashamed of how I grew up. I'm never ashamed of the God I serve. Uh, I'm never ashamed to even be out in the streets with people. Um, my, one of my, my pastors used to tell me, Nicole, go out there in the street, talk to those people because I'll do it. I'll go and talk to anybody in any, anywhere. I'll travel. I'll do whatever I need to do because I realize it's so much more than the four walls of the church. And if nothing taught you that more, it should have been this pandemic. The pandemic taught us that if you don't have your own relationship with God or if you don't have um, your own understanding, you're going to be lost. Because you got to have your own relationship. And, and this helped to minister to people who weren't in the church who wouldn't, you would have never seen at a church. So church trauma is real. And I, it was a confirmation to me because I started talking about it last year and last week. And then I listened to us. I was looking at a sermon this weekend and he happened to say church trauma this weekend. And I was like, hey, yes, that is a confirmation that we should be talking about this. Because it's no feeling like that feeling when you do have God on your side. Um, it's no feeling like being able to understand where your help does come from. But it is a bad feeling when you feel like you don't belong. It is a bad feeling when you feel like you should be ashamed of things that happened to you growing up. It is a bad feeling when you feel like you're being frowned upon. And that is not... God. That is not what we want to portray. That is God is loving. God is kind, you know, and he accepts everyone. If you and if you simply just read the Bible, you'll see that he accepts everyone. <laughs> Women at the well, issue of blood, you know, men, uh, kings who had um, issues with women and, and love women. God loves everybody. So there's no reason for you to be ashamed, okay? I will say that. I want you to hear that from me, Coley Cole Live. If you have never been to church or you have one of these things that I'm not going to church because I heard one of these things that I mentioned earlier, those things may have happened to people, but it doesn't have to necessarily happen to you. And if it does, that is your opportunity to share what you know about freedom and being able to express yourself because God is love and, and God allows us to be who we are. And if that wasn't the case, we would all be the same. Take that one for you, huh? Take that one in your brain pipe. <laughs> your brain pipe. Anyhow, um, I laugh about it, but it's a serious matter um, to some people, to a lot of people. And I laugh about it because I I've seen it, but I also wouldn't be where I am if certain things were not taught to me. Um, I will say for me and myself, I thank God for a lot of things that I learned because I learned how to dress appropriately um, from my parents, of course, and from church. I learned how to have a good appearance in front of people. I learned how to speak because I had to do a lot of speaking at church. I learned how to serve because I had to do a lot of serving at church. And I loved it all. Um, even the long hours, I learned how to pray. Um, there was nothing like an overnight shut-in. I love that where you can pray and you can actually, you know, seek God and, 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 and get what you need and pray for other people. I loved community outreach. I loved being able to um, learn that there's a time and a place for everything. There was, I was once told, or we were all once told that if you can dress good to go to work, then you can dress good to go to church. If your job says you have to wear a shirt and a tie, but then you can come to church with uh, holy jeans on, they said that that was t sort of backwards because you should be able to um, represent in the house of God like you do 
at work or better. So totally understand that. Back in the day, slaves wore their best clothes in the church because that was the only time they could dress up. And a lot of that tradition has been passed down. It's nothing wrong with wearing your jeans and all that kind of stuff. But just so you can understand where this stuff came from. It didn't just come out of thin air. Um, but I encourage people who love God and love to, to show that he is loving and he is kind and he will accept. Share that with other people. Don't keep that to yourself. Don't let church trauma go on. You know, we need to break certain cycles and let people know that this is a place for everybody. And looking at us, like, look at me. I am not perfect. And people who know me know that there's a lot of things that I could do better. But there's also a lot of things that we do good as as, as Christians and as, as people of God. And I'm not even going to get into whether you Kojic, Apostolic, Pentecostal, but God is God, and God loves us all, no matter how you get there. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. This is House Business Part 2, Church Trauma. Um, I want you to send me some comments. Um, click like, share this, go to my YouTube channel. I also want you to send me some messages in my inbox if you don't want people to know you know, who you are. I am very respectful of people's um, names and, and I don't put people on blast or anything. This is about us having conversations and healthy conversations because we all want to live healthy lives and we all want to be free to, to be in certain places. And I never want anybody to feel that because of some trauma that somebody else had that you can now not come to church or believe in God and even some of the people that I've talked to that have had trauma, we've discussed it, and those traumas have been broken. And, and, and they're, they're still believers, and now that they've you know, been able to come into their own, you know, things are fine. But it took us having those conversations, and it's a difficult one. And, and I'm putting my head on the block here to talk about it, because people won't talk about it. So on Call to Go Live, we will. Because why? It's okay to have your say. So... I would love to stay in chat, but I got to go. Thank you for joining me on Tuesday Thoughts. It's okay to have your say on Coley Cole Live. But if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. I thank you so much. I love you kindly. And please share, like, comment. Keep the conversations going. Healthy mental health. Mental health. Healthy mental health. Being healthy with our mental health is what it's about. Being healthy in our spirits is what it's about. Being able to accept people for who they are and help others along the way if they want help is what we are about. So, talk to you soon. I will see you next Tuesday on Tuesday Thoughts. Thank you for joining me. And please, please engage in conversation with me and everybody else online. Have a wonderful Tuesday.